start the recording. Okay, uh, welcome everyone to the IPFS All Hands Call for June 25th, 2018. Uh, kicking off the agenda today, we will be looking at, it looks like we don't have any agenda items to talk about, it's just gonna be demos today. So the first uh, demo is from Jacob here uh, with IPFS Private Networks. Go ahead with that. Share my screen. So this is I'm not share my whole. All right. Well, we're just going to do uh, Wireshark first, since the proof is in the pudding with this one. Um, so ultimately, uh, we've had private networks working in Go for a while. Um, and so now we've been working on the implementation in JavaScript. Um, so what I have, and I'll push up the notes for the demo later so you can actually see the code. But right now what it's doing is taking the IPFS daemon controller and it launches a Go node and a JavaScript node and has them talk to each other. It dumps information into the Go node and then pulls that from the JS node. Um, I have a public run that I'll show first with the network traffic, and then we'll show the network traffic of the um, the private runner. So we'll kick that off. Does everybody see that okay? Looks good. Okay. So what you'll see in the network traffic is those initial connections of unencrypted. It's doing the multi-stream negotiation now. We can actually see it doing multi-stream, SecIO, and then it turns encrypted and turns into garbage because it's under the SecIO encryption. So the next thing we will do is I will just go ahead and restart this so it's easier to see and we'll run the private connection. And the only difference between public and the private connection, actually setting those up, is that a swarm key file is included in the root of the repo. And so as long as that's there, both Go and JS will detect that it should be private and it encrypts everything. All traffic is, is encrypted, except at the very beginning, you'll see here there will be a 24-bit nonce that gets exchanged on both sides, and so that is just, right now, that is uh, a hex, 24. And so then immediately we see this 20, 20 bytes, and that is one of the nodes exchanging uh, multi-stream, so it's actually ex exchanging all of that encrypted. Um, we see the other knots get exchanged by the other node, and then from there on, everything is, is encrypted. There's no open, open data. We don't even see the protocol negotiation happen there. So that is fully functioning. Uh, everything just needs to get merged. And I'm currently working through a issue with the JS pull reader because um, it's actually, it doesn't handle the encrypted stream very well when it's trying to negotiate var ints. Um, so I am working on a fix for that. And then once we have that, we'll actually have it so that when a private stream with a different key calls another private stream in JavaScript rather than hanging on the connection because it can't figure what, how, what it's supposed to be doing, it will actually just immediately fail, um, which is what we would expect. So that's basically it. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I have a tiny one. Um, will, will this work through, uh, like in the browser, through, through the WebSocket transport? Annoying. Currently, it won't work through the browser because we have to have that swarm key file. So that's just a matter of if we run it in the browser, where does that swarm key file exist and yeah. without exposing it. Okay, got it. Thank you. But in terms of hooking it up, it could be like it could be included in an in application, right? So if an application just wants to seal itself off from the rest of the world, it just, it's not about being private. Uh, it could just uh, have some way of like specifying the key directly in the configuration of a lip 2 p daemon or something. Or sorry, of a lip 2 p uh, node. Right. 
any other questions before we move on here? Uh, looks like no. So we have two demos up from Juan next. Uh, go ahead and take it away, Juan. Hey, everybody. Um, I was hacking in a couple of different things uh, this weekend that I wanted to show. So I'll first show uh, IPFS Sync. So one second. I'm going to be showing the screen here. So um, IPFS Sync is a small tool uh, that I made in the command line a while back. Uh, and by the way, this is interesting. <laughs> the the uh, uh, This is pretty cool, like GitHub notifications on uh, packages uh, being vulnerable and stuff. So this just appeared like in the last five minutes. Uh, so we'll see what, what that is. But, uh, yeah, it's cool that they're doing this stuff. I wish there was something much more like directly actionable. Um, but uh, anyway, so the Sync is a small tool built one part in Go, one part in, in JavaScript. Um, the Go part is just some nice wrapping around uh, another tool called Sync, which is just very simple AES uh, encryption of a single uh, file. Uh, and this IPFS Sync uh, just takes some some path in your file system, tarballs it, encrypts it with, with this sync thing, uh, adds that ciphertext to IPFS, uh, and so on. So it's like just a very simple like parcel line wrapper around a bunch of other, other tools. Um, roughly how that works is suppose that I have some um, thing here, uh, some uh, just file system directory with uh, a certain set of files and you know some, some stuff. Uh, I can run, so I have this IPFS sync tool, um, that I can then run uh, a command called share. So here in encrypt and send, IPFS sync share local source path. Uh, and then uh, do it here. I'll like, make this a little bit bigger. Um, and so it, this comes out with a bunch of, uh, so, so what that did is it tarballed the entire directory, encrypted it, added it to IPFS, and then uh, gave me some, some helpful links. I guess there's some formatting issues. Um, so this was there for a bit of time already, uh, just so you can get a feel. Um, uh, this will just be some archive. Oh, interesting. Uh, HTTP. That's, oh yeah. Fail on two counts. There we go. Wow, that's, come on Chrome, you can do it. Here, I'll just curl it because that's much more likely to. So this is just, um, well, I'll do a local host because I don't know if I'm connected. Correctly. So that's just some some binary stuff. If I pull it down, um, that's just like a whole bunch of encrypted encrypted data. Um, so then, what IPFS sync already gives you it uh, in that command line tool gives you the ability to download that archive. So if I did um, sync download. Actually, I need to add it again because I lost my keys by clearing the, the, the uh, command line output. So the key is here. So the, the key that you use encrypt, it uses a random key. You can also pass in a key if you wanted to with the dash key, the dash key um, uh, argument. The key that it used encrypted is, is printed here. Um, I could use the IPFS download command as is described here to just output it. So if I did this, uh, then it, it would decrypt it out into destination path. Um, now, uh, the thing I wanted to show is this web VR. So I'll show it again. Um, and all of this is that important because it should be the same um, hash output. So this viewer is uh, what I was talking on. So I'm using um, companion. So it's like rendering. So it's diverting everything to be, to be local. Uh, so this viewer is uh, grabbing. Um, so this took that archive and then decrypted it on the front end. Uh, so it, uh, Here's the IPFS path to the ciphertext. Here's the AES decryption key, um, and they are inserted into the into the URL uh, under the anchor, uh, which means that this won't be sent to the server. It will just be preserved with whatever the, the link is posted and the browser. So the browser uh, has access to the key, um, and it shouldn't be sending it anywhere. Uh, that should stay a local side. And uh, what's up here is so this IPFS sync uh, address. Here, I'll do it on incognito so that you can see it. This is uh, just a, the, the simple viewer website right now. Um, it's not loading anything because this shouldn't be going, but this is just the viewer. Uh, so it doesn't have any, any stuff yet, but I can easily copy stuff over. So I put the encryption key, 
split the path and press load. And this should uh, pull down the stuff. Uh, it might take a bit of time. Uh, it, it might not be connected to it. So like my, not, my node might be behind an app and so it's failing to, to view it. Oh, let's see, localhost. Connectivity problems today. There we go. So that that uh, is working from my local machine. Um, so then you can you know view um, just various files. Um, I guess <laughs> this is the double link working thing. Uh, it's got stuck in there. Uh, you can see text files and so on. You can see the source so uh, of files. So like you could grab a, an image and see the source. So I think this is taking a bit of time to render, but here's like a source of a JPEG. Um, and then you can download individual files. So if it's an encrypted archive, you could click download and then that, that downloaded that uh, uh, picture um, and so on. And you can download the whole archive. So this will download the entire archive unencrypted. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it just like decrypted it for me. Um, so anyway, then uh, this copies the link. Uh, and then again, this is the, the load page. And uh, the code for it is here at this address. Um, so I have sync. This probably should be moved to Shipyard. Um, I just would like to find somebody who, if, if I move it, I mean, maybe I'll just move it, it'll be, it'll be fine. Um, and then you can see like a, a larger demo here. So uh, this is, I think. Uh, so for some reason, I noticed uh, a lot of things uh, as I built this uh, about the entire ecosystem and the tooling. Uh, so one interesting thing is grabbing things from the gateway is surprisingly faster than using window.ipfs. So right now, because Companion is on, um, it's pulling from window.ipfs and that goes um, about 10x slower, um, maybe maybe less, but compared to here, this would, this will be without, um, I guess it's not as much slower. I guess I, I was detecting just a, a drastically different rate. Um, I think if, if I'm not focused on it, it won't download it. Uh, this is, I think, stuck for some reason. Uh, anyway, the gateway works much, much faster. This is going through a local gateway. Um, and uh, this also has, has a, you know, here's a much larger archive. Uh, all of it is, is in tarballs and so on. Uh, and you can even render, render video. So that is uh, fully encrypted uh, archives in, in IPFS with a simple tool. Now this I should warn uh, everybody, this is, a random hack, don't use it for anything serious, absolutely, um, and needs to be audited and so on. Uh, but this at least is an experiment of what it might look like to uh, distribute entirely encrypted archives that are then viewable on the web. Uh, so the next steps from, th uh, from this is to, is to reason about uh, what does it mean to keep around like all these links with capabilities, that's not the ideal scenario, it works kind of okay for a small uh, pace or something like that, uh, but it's not ideal for anything much, much more serious than that. Um, and it's also brought up an interesting uh, way to do something we've wanted to do for a long time, which is have fully encrypted applications. So with this archive, what you could do is uh, bundle an entire website um, and then have it encrypted uh, and then have the browser de uh, download the thing, decrypt it, and then render all of the pages directly on the client side. So now you have a fully encrypted application moving around. And so we're pretty close to that. I think uh, we just need a bit more tooling to make that, uh, make that easy to do. But I think the, the heavy lifting is already it's already there. Uh, the other side of this would be figuring out an, uh, an actually proper way to do uh, just all of the encryption of this stuff with like, again, better key management and so on. Key management is gonna be a, a really big thing in our world. Um, and you know, the, yeah, uh, right now it's not entirely clear that this link is you know, having a capability in it, in it. I and mean, depending on where you put this link, uh, then you're like revealing uh, the entire contents of the, of, of the key, right? I mean, you're revealing the entire contents of the archive by revealing the key. So uh, any, any questions so far? I can't see everybody, so just speak. Yeah, can we stop sharing, I guess? I want to share something, uh, something else right after this, if you... Um... Gotcha. Any, any questions, anyone? I guess post in the chat. Very cool. Um, and uh, there's a thing called crypt paste, which, as you might imagine, um, paste from from. Uh, so I wanted to be able to paste things directly into into an encrypted thing, and so uh, now now we have a way to like 
copy and paste and distribute like a, an, a paste bin uh, with, with this. Uh, great, so that is it for this demo. Should I move on to the, to the next one? I think so, yep. Cool, so the other thing I wanted to show is a tool called, um, so there was a, this long standing uh, repo from like many years ago, I guess four years ago was when it first started. Uh, it never quite worked. Uh, the idea was to create a bot on Hubot that uh, gave you a pin bot. So um, after seeing a number of people uh, on, on a Slack kind of struggle with pinning things and asking each other to pin stuff for them, uh, I figured it was just time to, to make this thing. Uh, so I, I made this bot, it turned out to be uh, surprisingly easy. Um, and you, the entirety of, of this bot is inside this hypothesis.coffee thing. Um, it, here's the list of commands that it supports. Um, all of the ones commented out are not supported. You'll notice that it's mostly write. Uh, anything that writes is not, not supported. It's just uh, um, mostly reading, reading and pinning. I guess pinning is technically writing, but um, everything else uh, is like, you know, you can't GC the repo, you can't do anything more of that. There might be a utility in doing that, um, but, uh, but for, so far it's, it's just read only. So here is, uh, I don't know if you can see. So ha if I have that uh, archive from before, I can take the ciphertext, uh, the path of the ciphertext, and then pin it to this pinbot. And I say, hey, pin, pinbot, pin this. Um, is it going to work? Oh, man, is it not like alive? Oh, yeah, that's right. I need to talk to it. So now it uh, works as you would expect from the IRC pinbot. It just goes, fetches all the refs for that, uh, and then pins them. I think I'm probably not connected to the to the rest of the world or something. Uh, so I am. My daemon is connected. Maybe I have a tool called Push that tries to pu push refs into into IFS that I know is total hack. Uh, for because otherwise sometimes it's just really hard for things to find me. Um, I said this if it if it works at all, it'll grab it. Um, this, oh, this might also be a bit large. Um, actually, no, no it's, it's small. So uh, it's weird. All right, it finally pinned. Um, so now, now it's there. You can also ask it for uh, help, um, and that gives you just the, the, that set of commands that it supports. Um, it filters out the ones that it doesn't support, and so it does it does everything else too. So you can do like, um, you know. Uh, pin bot. You can ls a uh, thing directly on, on there, and it'll give you the output. Uh, you can do a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, now, the interesting thing is, um, it it's, turns out to be quite easy to write all of these commands. Um, here's like a, you know, supporting most of the commands is just forwarding the, the arguments and forwarding them uh, and just taking the output and and uh, displaying it nicely. Um, and then the goal for this is that right now it has Slack integration, but this is just a Hubot, um, a, a Hubot uh, plugin. So this could work with all the other things that Hubot works on, uh, including GitHub. So what would be really nice is to have a Hubot directly on GitHub that has some kind of authentication uh, privilege. So that's the hard part on this is like figuring out the authentication story. Um, same with Pinbot, I guess. Um, but presumably what we could get to is a point where you could be in an issue and you could do something like, um, Hey, it actually works now. But. So let's close that issue. Um, but ideally, you should be able to do something like pinbot pin right here, and then have that have that actually um, work right on GitHub. And that you know, already a bunch of people use Hubot on GitHub, and this would probably speed up uh, a lot of the people's development with with a bunch of files and, and assets that need to get. Um, a pin and so on, especially for, for pull requests. Uh, cool, that's it. Any questions on this? None. Great. Very cool Sweet. stuff. Very, very. Uh, I'm excited to see the Hubot stuff with regards to our infrastructure and things like GX so that pins don't get lost. <laughs> yeah, seriously, that's, GX. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that, that it could work really well with GX.
Uh, I guess there are some questions in chat. Um, Jamie Wilkinson says, yeah, this is great. Uh, when feeling more stable, we'll have to break it out into a package that can be pulled into other keybots. Uh, it already is that way. Actually, I guess it's not fully. Um, now where's the other? Yeah, close it. Um, I, th I don't know how the plugin style for the repos works, but all it, it is is this ipfs.copy file. Everything is completely self-contained into that. So I think if you pull this into, into other keywords, that should, that should work. Um, then Adam asked, does it support charted directories yet? Uh, I, it, it does whatever IPFS does. So if, if IPFS doesn't automatically do, do charted directories, then it does not. If it does, then it does. It, it, that is kind of like the wrong layer for the, for the stack for that. Uh, any other questions about Qbot? Is that JS IPFS or Go IPFS? Uh, this is uh, Go IPFS. So Qbot is um, here's where the the um, it loads the um, it uses it uses a gateway link. So paired with a gateway, then it'll work. Um, it checks for a local gateway, and if there isn't one, then it uses the no, never mind. It needs to talk to a local node. Um, where is the? Yeah, somewhere here. There's like a. It, it just expects. Um, it uses IPFS API. There we go. Yeah, so it uses a local IPFS URL, um, which is defined here. So, just expects a daemon running locally at the standard ports, um, and then sorry, you can't see what I was looking at. Uh, it, it just uses a uh, a which is the standard um, ports for JS IPFS API, uh, but it's, it's expecting a Go IPFS daemon. Uh, it could be cool to, to try running it with, a, with an embedded JS IPFS node, but I haven't, haven't done that. All right, I guess there's no more questions. Not seeing any. So if there's no more agenda items or demo, uh, I think we can conclude for today. So thanks everyone for coming and showing off all these exciting projects. And I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> See ya.